Hey guys, Rich here at RCInformer.com. Thanks for checking out this uh, build guide of the uh, Unique Models F4U4 Corsair. Uh, it's a super nice model, guys. I've, I had a good time putting it together and uh, had, a, had a lot of fun flying this thing. And uh, it's definitely a keeper. Uh, it's receiver ready, guys. All you gotta do is add your battery uh, and your radio and go. Uh, this build guide that I'm doing here is going to be a little bit of a, a, a review again of the model and a little bit of a build guide. Uh, but it's going to be a little shorter than some of the other ones I've put out, uh, mostly because this airplane really didn't need a whole lot. Uh, uh, everything pretty much went together, threw the battery in, went and flew it, and it flies fine uh, just as is. Um, the only real changes that I made or things I did differently, I did add a little bit of nose weight uh, because it bounced at about 32% um, after the leading edge. And uh, uh, although it flew fine, shifting it forward to about 25% uh, uh, made it fly a little bit less pitch sensitive. Uh, and I think the plane flies a little bit better there. Um, the only other real change I made or, or um, improvement modification really was um, uh, I added a little bit of plywood uh, to the um, to the uh, uh, to the cowling just to reinforce the holes. You don't have to do it. You can leave it the way it is. But I felt it was a little bit more secure, and I'm going to show you how to do that in here. Um, probably one of the biggest things uh, to point out about this model, something I've had a lot of questions from a lot of people about, is how tough, how strong is the landing gear? Well, uh, it's a proprietary system. Uh, the Unique Model has a patent on it, and it's uh, it's different than any other gear system I've seen. Um, if you don't believe me on how tough it is, I decided to put together a couple of clips of some of the bad landings I have and let you see what those look like. Anyway, here you go. Right, guys, as you can see from some of those landings, uh, uh, the gear is pretty darn tough. I have not bent a gear, broke a gear. Uh, the, the, the gear just keeps on going. It can take licks like that and just keep on ticking, I guess. Um, anyway, it's retractable main gear, retractable tail wheel. I'm going to show you that in the video and I'm going to show you in detail the mechanism and how it works. And it's a really, really nice sports scale airplane with tough landing gear that you can kind of beat up a little bit. Um, uh, some of the other things about the airplane, uh, as far as flying it goes, um, I made a separate video that's about six minutes long, uh, and it really shows the, the speed and the performance of the airplane. Uh, it, uh, it does pretty good point rolls for a warbird. Uh, it flies inverted super solid if you like to do that kind of thing. Even though it's not really a scale maneuver, uh, it'll hold an inverted line and just fly it straight down the runway. It's, it's, uh, it's really pretty nice. Uh, and as you see, if you watch the video, um, it lands beautifully, guys. I really didn't use the flaps at all. Um, uh, it's nice to have a warbird action that you don't need to use the flaps, and it, and it still lands really nice. Um, some of the other features of the airplane that you can tell right off the bat that are really nice and really scale, uh, in particular, is the propeller. It's a 13-inch, beautiful, big, four-bladed prop. It's all one piece, so you don't have to worry about breaking uh, any individual blades. And uh, not only does it look good, as you see from the flying video, it flies the airplane nicely. It's very fast and it's a good flying propeller. Um, uh, in addition to, to, to that and the retracts, it also does have partial flaps. Uh, F4s have, or um, uh, uh, F4Us have um, uh, three flap segments per wing. This doesn't have the full flap uh, segment capability, but it does come with flaps. Uh, partial flaps uh, installed and, uh, and, and ready to go. Um, also, you get a pilot with the airplane, and he's a pretty scale pilot. He pretty much does look like a, uh, a World War II pilot, and he fits in there nicely. Um, otherwise, the airplane comes pretty much just the way you see it, guys. Um, it uh, has all the markings applied. It's painted and everything. Uh, one other detail I did to make the plane a little more realistic, uh, I took out my airbrush, and I uh, mixed up some blue paint, matched it, and uh, I painted all of the um, um, uh, uh, linkages um, from the servos uh, that attach the, or the horns, I guess I should say, and the linkages. And it kind of made those little white plastic pieces disappear. And it really adds a little more scale detail to the airplane. Uh, anyway, guys, um, without further ado, let's get on to the build guide. I hope you enjoy it.
Starting off the review and the build guide of the Unique Models F4U4 Corsair, we're taking a look here at the uh, outside front panel of the box. Uh, most of the time this is pretty much how you get it in the mail. Uh, sometimes uh, you get an outer box, but uh, uh, I have found that their packaging just like this is sufficient enough to make it through the mail all in one piece. With the box top removed, uh, you can see uh, pretty typical of uh, Unique Models packaging. Everything is uh, nicely center packed and very well protected. Here's all the parts laid out after I took them out of the box. Everything was individually bagged. Uh, everything looks like it's in nice shape and uh, real nice quality. Uh, starting with the wing in the upper left corner, the rotating retractable landing gear is uh, pre-installed and uh, seems to be very durable. You get two pre-installed servos, one for the aileron, one for the flaps. Uh, flaps and ailerons are pre-hinged and uh, look like they're in real nice shape. Uh, also, the wiring harness between the two wings is already um, pre-installed, so the wings are joined via all the wires and so forth. So all you need to do is really glue them together and the plane's ready to go. Uh, also, uh, the missiles and the uh, drop tanks are very nicely painted and real high quality. They're very good looking on the airplane. Uh, the propeller, uh, very cool propeller. Hamilton standard decals on it, similar to the PC-9 pre-painted tips and it's one piece and it seems to be a really rugged and a really big propeller uh, so that that they can't wait to get that on there that looks really nice uh, two bags one with glue screwdriver control horns the other one with spare hinges if you need them uh, rudder and elevator are uh, real rugged looking and pre-hinged and the fuselage is pretty typical of, uh, of the unique model stuff uh, it seems very rigid has nice detail to it uh, has uh, the uh, tailwheel retract uh, already installed and the landing gear control board and, and ESC and motor all pre-installed and ready to go. So uh, this should be a pretty quick and, uh, and, and easy and actually real fun uh, build. When gluing the tail surfaces in place, uh, here's a few suggestions I have and here's the way I'm going to do mine as well. Uh, first of all, I went ahead and uh, hooked up the receiver and uh, I extended the uh, tailwheel retract unit. Um, and I went ahead and took this bag that came with the airplane actually and I, I stuck it up here in the well and as you can see from here I wrapped it all the way around the whole mechanism. This will keep any glue from dripping down and uh, getting down there and binding up the, uh, the mechanism. Um, uh, uh, the reason for this is I'm using epoxy to glue mine. Anybody that's seen any of my videos knows that I like to use epoxy just because I think it's a stronger bond than using the glue that uh, comes uh, with the airplane. The glue comes with the airplane, you can get away with using it. Uh, it will bond okay, but I find it to be messier. Uh, it's tough to, to work with, more tougher than epoxy to work with, I think. And uh, as long as you scuff this surface, guys, um, the epoxy will glue to this thing uh, really well. So uh, a couple other things I would do too before um, uh, uh, gluing this all in is uh, just make sure you got a couple holes down here uh, because when you put the uh, epoxy in here um, and, and, and the holes are going to go down through right through here here and here and it'll go down into the well uh, and the reason for that is is when you put epoxy in here it could make a fluid seal and when you try and put the elevator down on uh, it could uh, uh, there could be air bubbles in here that won't let the thing seat down so if you just get a couple holes in there any glue or air can can go through uh, can go get down through that hole and uh, allow the elevator to uh, uh, completely seat. Uh, prior to putting the elevator and the rudder on, what I would suggest doing is um, uh, get the horns on there first. Uh, I would use four screws. Uh, I know guys say you can use two diagonally, but I think it's much better, much safer to use uh, four all the way around. Uh, you might as well because you have the extra holes in there. You'll notice that, uh, again, I scuff this surface. I scuff this surface right here. Uh, so the, the epoxy will bond to everything much better and you can see that just sort of drops into place and uh, also same with the rudder I just did a little scuffing of it and uh, that too just kind of fits into place if you use 30 minute epoxy uh, you probably can get away with doing this all in uh, all in one shot but uh, there you can see it fits nicely and I think using epoxy is going to give you a much stronger bond for this uh, this whole thing all right here's a here's a look at the, the surfaces that you're going to want to scuff up uh, prior to epoxying these are all the contact areas uh, also notice I took the wires and uh, I separated them and wrapped them up and taped them to the inside portion. Um, so if it removes any paint, it's only going to remove it from the part that's going to be on the inside of the airplane. But uh, with epoxy and a brush, you're just going to sort of stick these together and, uh, and that's going to be it. It'll make a nice, uh, nice strong bond. Now that the wing is uh, fully assembled, I thought I'd show you one feature that I really like about this airplane. And it's also a feature that... Um, uh, the T6 Texan 2 has, but uh, what it is is it's this wiring harness. Um, this is a nice feature where they take basically the uh, retract uh, wires 
and they take the uh, uh, aileron wires and, um, and uh, they put them all into this one harness. So you can actually uh, just plug this one in and what this does is it plugs the ailerons and it plugs the landing gear in all with just one plug instead of having a whole bunch of them. Uh, this separate one here is for the flaps. Uh, but anyway, it's nice because it minimizes uh, all the connections that you have to make and uh, just makes it easier to get the wing uh, on and off. Just like with all my other planes, guys, I highly recommend that uh, take all the clevises for the uh, elevator, uh, elevators, the aileron, the rudder, uh, and the flaps even, and uh, secure your clevises with a small piece of fuel tubing uh, or with a, um, with a tie wrap or something. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is just, you know, put them around a pair of pliers like this, um, you know, stretch them over your clevis, and very carefully just kind of insert it over there, pull it off, and then uh, just kind of slide this thing down a little bit. And uh, once you get it slid down, you can go ahead and insert your clevis on there and uh, secure it. And then uh, go ahead and take your tubing and uh, just slide it forward here. And that'll help keep the clevis in place. Again, guys, uh, safety first. Keeps the airplane much safer and secure. And uh, it's a real inexpensive way to do that. Take a look at the cowling here, guys. Uh, here's a change that I made that I think uh, it will make this uh, cowling much, much stronger. And uh, that is, is uh, this area of foam right here and this area of foam right here on the bottom. There's a screw that goes through here and uh, uh, there was nothing but foam really holding it in place. So it appeared to me that this whole cowling, when it was in place, it was really moving around uh, quite a bit with, again, nothing but foam here. So what I did to sort of strengthen it a little bit, I took this 1 64th plywood, okay, and uh, with the grain going this way, it curves a little bit, so I was able to glue it right down in here. Same thing with this piece. I was able to put a long piece in there, and already it makes it really rigid, so you could tell this thing, I could tell right away after gluing them in that this thing was really tough. Uh, the next thing is I just took a round piece of dowel rod, uh, and after cutting out the foam in there, I put the dowel rod in there and then drilled a hole through it. Same thing here, so now there's some support and there's something to back the screw up in there, so you know, now you go ahead and you put this thing on, and you put your screw in there, and now it is tough. This thing hardly even moves, and it's nice and rigid on there. So anyway, that's my improvement, my upgrade for the cowling, uh, just to make it a little tougher, a little stronger, a little more secure on there. Here's a look at the eight missiles and two drop tanks that come on the airplane. Uh, they're very attractive, and they're really good looking on the airplane. They add a lot of realism to them. Uh, they're very lightweight. Uh, they're just made out of EPO and painted uh, just like the rest of the airplane. Uh, they're optional, so uh, you can put them on if you like or you can leave them off. I, I left mine off just uh, because I didn't want the extra drag on there and I wanted the plane to go a little faster. So you'll get a little more performance and a little more flight time uh, if you leave them off, but, uh, but they're a real, real nice uh, set of armament for the airplane. Here's a look at the flap system on the airplane, guys. Let me go ahead and operate them for you. There's one setting. There's two settings. If you wanted to, they, uh, you could probably put a slowdown mechanism on them. They're not a full flap, because as, as most people who are Corsair fans know, that uh, Corsairs actually have three flap segments, so it's just a partial. Uh, honestly, I haven't really used them, guys. Uh, I've been flying the airplane. Uh, it's nice to have a Corsair, a Warbird like this, that's uh, relatively high performance, that, uh, that doesn't really even need flaps to land. So, uh, but anyway, they're installed, and they come pretty much uh, just the way you see them. With the wing installed and all the electronics plugged in, here's a look at uh, the landing gear uh, in operation. And you can see everything moves smoothly and slowly. Uh, they uh, have actually uh, cut the time in half. It's about eight seconds, it's about seven or eight seconds for the landing gear to go completely up and about seven or eight seconds for it to come completely down. All right, and the system works real well, guys, uh, right out of the box, pretty much just the way you see it. Here's a look at the main landing gear system. I've had a lot of questions from guys about how durable and how rugged this system is and how well it works. Um, for a Corsair, uh, I haven't done anything to this gear. Uh, the time I'm making this video right now, uh, I've already done the flight video and put it out. All the flying uh, for the video has been done on it, so you know, it probably has, who knows, 100 landings or so on it, and I haven't had to do anything to it. 
It's been very reliable, very rugged. It has no suspension to it. This uh, has no compression to it at all. This scissor link here is just for looks, but it's a 1200 millimeter model, guys. It's not real heavy and it doesn't need uh, the suspension to it. Uh, it's a very, very rugged uh, plastic. It's almost like a, uh, I'd almost like dare to say it's almost like an acrylic or something, but it's a patented design that Unique Models has made and it's, uh, it's, an, it's, uh, it's a proprietary system that they've designed and it's really unlike uh, any other uh, system that I've seen out there. Most of them are the generic plugins that uh, you, know, you put in, have four screws and then you can use whatever strut you want on it. But uh, here's a close up of the uh, metal trunnion. You can see the, uh, uh, the uh, jack screw down in there and you can see it doesn't have a drag link, it has a drag pin. And uh, this uh, pin will strike uh, uh, this uh, piece right here, and uh, that'll, that's what rotates the gear. Let me cycle it for you, take a look at how it works. All right. And you can see that drag pin just uh, rotates this whole thing around and locks the gear into place. Uh, and you can see right here the, um, uh, the metal trunnion's fully extended now. You got two uh, screws down in here that hold the gear into place, and that's it. Those two screws go into a, um, uh, a real thick plastic plate on the top side of the wing. Uh, that's, uh, that, that's very, very tough. Very little play in the system. It locks it into place nicely. And uh, let me go ahead and uh, retract the gear for you so you can see how it goes down in there. And you can see the rotation of the wheel. It's nice and smooth. Anyway, real nice system, guys. Very rugged, very durable. Definitely a nice system. Here's a close-up of the uh, tailwheel assembly, guys. It has its own servo that's uh, built into it. You remove these four screws right here to get the whole mechanism out in one piece. Um, it has, again, it has its own uh, servo for steering. And uh, the way it's designed out of this kind of flexible plastic, too, uh, similar to the, to the main strut, is it has a little bit of give to it. It definitely has some flex to it. And I have pounded this thing into the ground just like the main gears a bunch of times, and it's held up with, uh, with absolutely no problems. So let me go ahead and cycle it so you can take a, see, take a look at what it looks like. All right, real quick, real simple, and it goes, up, uh, it goes up in seconds, guys. The main gear takes about six or seven seconds. This gear, as you can see, is up in about half that time. Let me go ahead and extend it again for you. And there you have it, guys. It functions nice, has its own servo. Uh, it's real rugged and uh, real reliable. Okay, here's a look at the, uh, the nose weight that I added to the airplane, guys. As you can see, I added uh, two ounces of weight to this thing. Uh, there's plenty of room in this cowling. You can put the weight almost anywhere. I just chose to put it here. It just seemed to be a good place to put it. I cut a couple notches here. You see that I cut one notch here, so this strip of... Uh, of, uh, of weights could go in here. I cut another notch in here and uh, taped this notch in. Uh, mine's a little bit beat up here because I actually had tape wrapped around holding this on and I br airbrushed it just to make it a little cleaner for the shot here guys. Um, but what I would do is what I'm going to do after this is I'm going to rewrap some tape from the top around these weights so this weight doesn't fall onto the motor and these things don't fall off. But they are taped in and you want to tape them and secure them in place. Uh, really, you just want to um, uh, use whatever weight you need uh, to, to balance the airplane out. Mine so happened to really just need uh, about two ounces up front uh, in addition to the, uh, you know, the battery weight that gets added. But uh, anyway, um, there's a very tight fit between the cowl and, um, and, and this uh, front surface. Uh, so I had to recess these. Believe it or not, just sticking these onto this surface, the cowl wouldn't fit on anymore. So I had to, I had to countersink and, and recess these weights. Uh, and, and tape them in place to get them to stay on. Here's a couple battery suggestions, guys. I've, I've uh, flown both these Sky Lipos in the airplane. Uh, I didn't want to modify the battery compartment at all, although this plane needs a little extra nose weight, I think, and uh, could use um, uh, a heavier battery and heavier weight. But uh, anyway, I've flown the airplane with both of these. Uh, it's a 2250 uh, 40 C pack and uh, a 2650 30 C pack. Uh, you're looking at 250 grams for the uh, 22 and uh, about uh, just under 300 grams for the 2650. I prefer the 2650. It's a little bit, you see it's a little bit larger in size uh, slightly and uh, about 50 grams heavier or so. And I prefer the 2650. You get five to seven minutes easy out of this pack, guys. So uh, it goes a long way. And uh, at the price of $24, uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a decent battery and it's, it's what, I like to, uh, what I like to operate in there. Um, as you can see right here, the airplane's balancing nicely. 
Uh, I have it balancing at about 25% uh, aft of the uh, leading edge, and uh, which puts it at about 60, 65 millimeters uh, aft of the leading edge. Um, with the uh, with no nose weight added, and this has a nose weight in it. I have two uh, the two ounces uh, that you, that uh, of nose weight in this airplane right now. Um, uh, the stock configuration, if you just throw a battery in and go fly it, the plane will fly fine. Uh, but it balances at about 32 percent, so it was a little bit twitchy, but still flew okay. Uh, after moving it forward, uh, the plane flies uh, uh, much much better. But when you balance the airplane like this with most airplanes. You want to have the landing gear extended, uh, and uh, the way I have my balancer set up here in this picture here, guys, uh, it balances um, uh, right on that little plastic uh, piece on the top of the wing where the uh, gear screws into. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's your balance point, guys, about 25% aft of the, siege, uh, aft of the uh, leading edge, which translates to about 60 to 65 uh, millimeters uh, aft of the leading edge. All right, guys, that concludes uh, this review and uh, build guide on the Unique Models F4U4 Corsair. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Please send me questions, guys, any way you want uh, via email or uh, leave your comments here uh, on, the, um, on the video. Um, uh, you can email me direct uh, via the rcinformer.com website as well. I also started a, uh, a uh, Facebook uh, uh, channel that you can get on Facebook and type in RC Informer and you'll pull it up and you'll see a lot of these videos and pictures and things. And I'm going to try and put very current and up-to-date things on there uh, via my cell phone and, and so forth as I do them. Um, also check out RC Groups and RC Universe. I started Unique Models uh, uh, um, uh, videos on a lot of the airplanes and videos and things that I've done. Uh, so please check that out. Anyway guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and we'll see you next time.